Every uh, couple of weeks, we have a chat with our Professor of Education from the University of Newcastle, Professor John Fischetti, who once again has uh, matched up the clothing, the jacket, the tie, the shirt, uh, mate, all, all looking a million dollars today, mate, putting us to shame as usual. All for you, Mark. <laughs> I have to do something other than a black T-shirt one day. You walk in and go, who's Whoa, here? What's Whoa, 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 what's going on here? But it will happen one day just not today. Um, we want to have a look today, John, at how we learn things, but some of those very basic building blocks of, uh, of how memory works and, and how we get to do things. And we want to start with those simple things like uh, learning how to tie your shoes, riding a bike, the things that, that once they get into the brain, they, they just never leave. Yeah, Mark, we're always talking about policy and what's the next directive coming mm. down from above. But fundamentally, Humans aren't really wired to remember things very well. We're habits, and we tend to reinforce those habits. Good. It's not just me. It's everybody. (laughs) No. Within two weeks, anything you've taken in, you won't remember, like 80 to 90% of it. That's why people are always struggling to think about. It's just natural. That's Mm -hmm. the human brain just because we're not as sophisticated as we pretend we are. So if that's the case, how are we going to remember things really becomes the key to any kind of learning. So how did we learn two plus two is four? How did, how did we learn yeah. that? Somebody told us. Yeah, so, Somebody no. told us, but we would have forgotten that. So after yeah. they told us, what did we do with it? Yeah, we re- somehow remembered it. We, we yeah. practiced it. We probably did a homework assignment. Mm-hmm. We might have taken two blocks and two blocks and then told it was four. Mm-hmm. And it might have taken three or four years for us to know three times four is 12, you know, six times four is 24, those things. Lots and lots of practice. But if it's just that repetitive and we don't put it in the real world, it doesn't really stick. So almost everyone out there can know that there's eight slices of pizza in a Domino pizza and half of that is four because I want four. But if you ask almost every kid in year four or five, what's one half of eight? They somehow stumble on that. What's one half a dollar? Almost everyone can give you a 50 cent piece and two of those equal a dollar, even if those dollars smaller than the two fifties. We somehow know that, but the rest we don't. It starts by understanding that Learning long term is actually a practicing, creating new habits of the brain. So how did you learn how to tie your shoes, Mark? Yeah, well, again, it's not just the uh, repetitiveness, but it is uh, repetition in that real world, in the real world. Very good point. Yeah, a lot of times we think it's because a teacher taught us. Mm. Did we watch a YouTube video? Did we um, figure it out ourselves? Did we have a brother or sister who assisted us? The answer could be all of those. But most of the time, it's when we got to trial and error things ourselves. And for most of us, that's 7 to 21 times it takes of real practice. Not the same way like listening to the teacher. Yet in schools, mostly it's teacher talk, 70 to 80% of the time. We have to flip that around to give kids the chance to have real understanding and real meaning that lasts a lifetime. But it means we just can't cover as much stuff, right? Well, there's a lot of st- And if we're going to forget a lot of the stuff anyway, maybe just getting rid of that clutter and having a lot more of the the actual important things um, taught in a in a in a real world in a real world way, so and, that they can be applied in a practical sense. And that's where the merger of old school and new school really works. So flashcards to learn your multiplication tables actually works, and you have to present it to an external audience, not just present it to yourself. I sat on the kitchen stool while my mum was fixing supper, she would ask me three times seven, 12 times 12, you know, 11 times Mm -hmm. 11. I learned them by repeating them, but then I also got to see them applied in the real world because none of that matters if it's just information. So some kids who are shallow on some of the basic skills, it's as simple as more practice, which sounds very old school. But with the new technologies, some of those technologies can assist us since some of the games that are out there for young children actually facilitate that Some actually are dangerous because they're just flashing lights and distractions. So parents have to be really careful and really read the ratings and really read the comments on some of those things that are giving kids practice. Because right now, with everybody so busy, I'd just rather hand you my iPad and let you entertain yourself. Warning, warning, we don't want to just hand kids that. The old school and the new school methods, both integrated, are probably what we need to do. Well, that's a point, John, because then if you just go completely into one way of thinking, you know, full bore into it, um, then you're not taking into account individual learning styles. Because while some of us are, will very much adapt to that quickly, there may be some that just that, that, that the other way works too. Right. And if you think about riding a bike. You can't learn a bike by reading a book, watching <laughs> no, a YouTube video, you watching your brother ride a bike. Um, we're watching some movie about somebody falling off a bike. 
you've got to go practice. And along the way, all of us would have had a lot of issues riding a bike. At some point, that little wobble becomes a steady and we're okay. Maybe we skinned our knee along the way. We have to take that into the core content and think, well, if, it's, if you're going to be able to ride a bike, no, if you've ever ridden a bike, all you got to do is hop on and you can ride it. The same could be true for maths and science and the other areas if we actually learned it and didn't just take it. So what we've got to figure out is, are we comfortable not trying to cover an entire syllabus and going deeper into the core concepts that are the building blocks of what real knowledge is? Otherwise, we're just pretending at school because the students won't remember it anyway. It's very confronting to say that in term three, mm -hmm. no one will have remembered what was took place in term one unless they practice it seven to 21 times. Have we gone too far the other way then, in John, in assuming that the more things, the more content we get right. in there, the more, the more, the more we're teaching you more, so therefore you were better prepared. But we haven't taken into account the fact that most of it, it kind of really is in one ear out the other. And the way we assess it, which is a great point you made, Mark. The way we assess it is usually recall in the short term. So you remember it for an exam, but it doesn't matter. It's out the other ear by the next day. What is real learning is I should be able to demonstrate to you what it is I've learned and also be able to do that next term, not just today. Otherwise, I didn't learn it. I took it. And in the end, we're wasting a lot of time in school thinking we're teaching stuff, but we haven't actually learned stuff. That's why I like the notion of learner in school rather than student. Because mm. student can be I'm sitting listening to Mark. Learner means I'm engaged in my own learning. That means you've got to make it interesting for me, and that's the magic of teaching. We've got to use a variety of pedagogies. That's the way in which we teach so that all students are motivated. Because the, in the past, we used to differentiate people by how much they remembered. But remembering is in a very short period of time. Even the smartest amongst us don't remember much of anything. Uh, we'll finish where we started. I'm glad it's not just me. <laughs> a professor of education uh, from the University of Newcastle, John Fischetti, as always, thank you for your time. Thanks, Mark. 2NURFM, a broadcast service of the University of Newcastle.